Hey. How are you? Well, it's so good to see you. I'm glad we could catch up today. I hope you haven't been waiting Not long. too long. In a town that loves power lunching, it's always about who you're with and where you're going. Oh, I love it here. I'm talking to the leading minds on energy and giving you a taste of DC. I was just staring at all the really yummy yeah. treats. I'm Monica Trousey, and this is Off the Menu. Let's do. Yeah. Okay. You're an expert in risk and resilience. How do you define resilience? Well, for us, and this has been one of the challenges of, of running a resilience center and talking about resilience, is that people define it differently. Yeah. But in, in our words, in our thinking, it is helping people and institutions and governments prepare for, better prepare for, withstand and recover from shocks and stresses. So there are the things that shock us like a tornado and a, oh, a big hurricane and wildfire. And then there are those slow onset events like sea level rise and urban heat that yeah. create, um, you know, equal damage and potential for harm, but are, uh, take more time. And so either of those, yeah. and sometimes they're compounding at both. Yeah. So you head up this center at the Atlantic Council that's mm -hmm. focused on resilience. You've received a $30 million grant from the Rockefeller Foundation. Right. Um, what, what are your plans? We're focusing on the challenges of climate change, migration, and security. And when you think about those challenges, they are um, they're, they're finite, but yet in their own right, so much work in yeah. each of those categories, and they converge. You know, when you think about Syria and the Syrian civil war, its foundations are in a drought, yeah. which was exacerbated by climate change. We're obviously big believers that um, nuclear is a critical part to, you know, um, carbon-free future um, and also resilient infrastructure. I'm yes. curious if you can talk a little bit about um, how energy systems need to be structured yeah. in order to create these resilient environments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest um, vulnerabilities is the grid and um, infrastructure, in, particularly in big cities that are just getting bigger. Yeah. And so thinking about, of course, the linkage between climate mitigation and climate adaptation and resilience, uh, we need an energy policy that acknowledges or that is as low to no carbon as we can as we can get um, yeah. so that's a that's a basic um, yeah. resilience is kind of a PR thing too I mean if you you can tell a really nice story mm -hmm. um, I think <clears throat> if you're if you're making these investments yes and of course what we want it to be is both you know you can tell a great story of a real impact that they have and part of the things that and can I just interject and say this is so good it's really good right <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm overcome by it. It's so delicious. I'm going to have to come back for dinner with some wine. Yes, yes, I think that would only enhance the flavors. I know, yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yes, next time. Um, so one of the things that we are um, underway is, is working with um, big, a big insurance company and thinking about where in big cities, the supply chain of companies that they insure are, you know, re resilient people equal resilient supply chain. It just does. And so thinking about investments from a corporate perspective in all those protections that make the supply chain and the people that produce the good and and um, you know move it up the, the, the chain to the end product, yeah. it's just smart business. Yeah. And it's a beautiful story because it's a story about a family. It's a story about a community. Yeah. So one of the things I think it will play into the way that companies and, and communities react to and prepare for um, climate change and all the other things that come with it is the increasing pressure on companies to disclose their financial risk mm -hmm. because of climate change. And I think that that is an, is an opportunity because when companies look at their physical risk and really see what the impact is and use these predictive models to measure it, 
it means more investment in resilience. All the work you're doing, it's really incredible. Thank you. Thank it's you for joining me for lunch. And I'm excited that I get to drink arancciato, well, which I used to drink in Italy as a child. Chin so chin. I'm so excited. Chin chin, exactly. Grazie. Grazie. <laughs>